So in this video, I'm going to be talking about different ways to get your designs printed onto t-shirts and some quick background about me for about five years, I was a full-time t-shirt designer. So in that time, I picked up quite a bit of knowledge about different methods for printing t-shirts and really what those methods excel at. So I'm going to try to convey as much of that knowledge that I learned during that time to you. So with t-shirt printing, there's a lot of different methods, but by far the most popular one is screen printing. And then there's several subways you can kind of screen print to as far as the inks are concerned. But right here is a basic image of a screen printing screen. And if you're unfamiliar with the screen printing process, basically each color will be on its own screen just like this. And you essentially apply some photosensitive material to the screen, which you then place your design under, usually on a transparent film or super, super thin paper. And then you expose the film and screen to light in order to cure it. And that'll essentially harden up all the areas on the screen where there wasn't a piece of the design. Since you'll print your design out in black and white, the black will cover up the light, allowing the rest of it to have the light show onto it, which makes the emulsion material become hard and everything else is easy to wash away. And once you clean up your screen after that, you're left with basically an imprint of whatever your paper was. So if you had a black W, for example, on the screen, and then you exposed it and washed the screen out, there'd be a area of the screen that was now the W that wouldn't have any of that material over it. And that's where the ink would go through the screen and onto your t-shirt. And really with screen printing, the biggest time sink of screen printing is doing each one of the individual screens to get it ready to print. So you have to separate your design out to all the different singular colors. So if you had a three color design, you would need three screens to print that. At least if you wanted to print it quickly, you could reuse the same screen over and over again, but that's super inefficient. So we'll be talking about this from a more professional way of doing things. But because of that, screen printing is really all about quantity. It becomes much cheaper the more t-shirts you produce because it offsets the time required to prep the screens with the photosensitive emulsion, as well as burn those designs in there and really get everything set up. So this next screen right here shows an example of a more professional screen printing setup where you can very quickly print multiple color designs. Each one of these stations would be typically a singular color. So in this case, this looks like a six screen setup. So you could do a six color print here and they would just spin these around to each station, run the squeegee through, which is what passes the ink. And there you have it. They also have automated versions of these where basically your only job is to put the new t-shirt on once the last one has been printed. These little slats at the bottom here are where the t-shirt kind of go over so that it has a nice flat surface to print on. But within screen printing, there's a ton of different screen printing methods. So I'm gonna go through the most popular ones here. So when you're picking a way to screen print something, if you think screen printing is the way to go, you can kind of figure out which makes the most sense. And I'm just using the website Threadbird, which is a printer for showing these since I have a website that actually has good examples. There's a lot of really terrible websites out there for printing that look like they're from the early 2000s, but this one looks good, so I'm gonna use this one. So the first ink is Plastisol. This is probably the most common ink. It's the most cheap ink to use, generally speaking, to print t-shirts. And it's a very robust type of ink. It can really stand up over time. And Plastisol is oil-based, so cleaning it up will require chemicals, which if you're really environmentally friendly, you tend to avoid Plastisol for that reason. It's not a very environmentally friendly way to print, but nevertheless, it's definitely the most popular. And it can be printed on both black as well as white colored shirts as shown here with this Rolling Stones logo and then this white shirt. Typically with a black shirt, in order to get these whites, for example, to be really nice and vibrant, what you do before you print it is there's a backer color. So you'd have to add in another color to the background that's typically a white in order for it to then print over. So that way when there's already a base white, anything printed over that will pop and shine a little bit better. If you're just to print straight up a one pass white on black, the end result might seem a bit spotty, a little bit gray, as opposed to these really vibrant whites. And it's also really important to consider when you're designing for screen printing, each color adds cost. So the more colors you choose to add to a design, the more expensive they get. And you can do really large colored printed designs if you want to, eight colors, 10 colors, 12 colors, kind of depending on how many stations the screen printer has in their automated or hand-done presses like this. This one would be limited to six colors. 
for the most part, screen printing makes the most sense when you're dealing with something like one to three colors. It's the most economical and affordable at that point. And as you go beyond that, things can get really expensive and add up quick. So just be really thoughtful about how many colors you're using when you're designing because it can have a big impact in what the actual cost is. And on white shirts like this, you don't have to use that backer color because you're printing on a nice light color. So that's definitely a positive and also another positive of printing on lighter color t-shirts as opposed to darker color t-shirts is that the less basically ink you throw on the shirt, the softer the shirt will feel, which is a definite plus. So in this case, this is just one color over white. It's probably going to feel a lot less inky, a lot less heavy than this Rolling Stones logo that has quite a few different colors on it. And I just noticed this Rolling Stone lips has braces on it, so it's probably not an official logo by any means. But nevertheless, pretty good example of plastisol printing right here. It's really good for pretty much any application you can think of. The only downside is as it gets older and older, they tend to crack. If you have your favorite t-shirt that has a bunch of like little crack marks all over it, odds are it's a plastisol print. It's just something that happens to the ink over time as it sees a lot of use. So next up here, we have water-based printing. And basically water-based printing, as opposed to plastisol printing, uses inks that are water-based. And there's a few benefits to that. One of the benefits is that it's a super, super soft print, unlike plastisol. Not that plastisol is always really heavy, but let's say you have a bunch of lines printed over your shirt and it's plastisol, and you rub your hand down that shirt, odds are you'll feel a bump for each one of those lines where the ink is. Whereas something like water-based printing, you'll feel basically nothing, especially after you've washed it at least once. And water-based printing is super easy to clean up from a printer side because you don't need chemicals to clean off the inks once you're done from all your screens. You can just hose it down with a hose or whatever water you have and you're pretty much good to go. So that's why water-based printing is pretty much the environmentally friendly choice for printers. Because of that, it's all pretty safe to just wash down the drain and you're good to go. It works best on lighter garments as opposed to darker garments because it doesn't have the incredible coverage that something like plastisol inks have since it's a thicker ink it does a better job at covering over the darkness of a black shirt for example but you can use it on darker shirts kind of like what it says right here on this website it'll just give you a little bit more of a vintage or faded feel but as always if you have questions about how something's going to look and which method will look the best on a particular shirt talking to your printer is a really smart idea because they see this stuff every day they know what to expect with the t-shirts and even different brands of the same same-ish color t-shirt like if you have two different brands both t-shirts are red the way the inks react to those two different brands of t-shirts could be quite significant, so it's always worth asking the printers about that stuff. Next up here we have discharge printing, and discharge printing is essentially the process of bleaching out the t-shirt's colors and then replacing it with a different color. It's a pretty cool process. And sometimes, for example, if you're doing a plastisol print like this Rolling Stones one right here on a black t-shirt, the backer or the color behind all the other colors that you never actually see because it's covered over by other ink is done as a discharge to basically bleach out the black of the t-shirt. So whatever colors over it become much more vibrant, they pop much easier. And it's also much softer because it's bleaching it out as opposed to laying a thick cover of ink over it. So that's kind of a cool thing about discharge printing. But with discharge printing, they can also replace the colors using discharge inks. So it will change the color to be whatever color you choose to replace it with. Really good printers are pretty good at color matching them with PMS, but it is more difficult because when you're dealing with different fabric types, different shirt brands, all that stuff, the way those t-shirts react to the process of discharge printing can be wildly different. So most printers will have preferred brands, preferred t-shirts, and even preferred colors to work on when using this particular method. And a definite benefit to doing discharge printing is that at least after the first wash, the t-shirt becomes extremely soft and you basically can't feel the print at all. Since all it did was bleach out that t-shirt's colors and then replace those old colors with a new color. And that takes away that inky residue that something like plastisol printing will do. And if you've ever bought a brand new t-shirt and smelled it and it smells just awful, like really bad, terrible, it's probably a discharge print because the chemicals in this process really smell bad. So you'll definitely want to wash these up before you go out and wear them. And like I said before, discharge printing is a little bit more of a difficult process than water-based or plastisol printing. So should you choose to go this method, finding a really good printer is a smart idea because odds are you'll have much better results using a high quality printer than someone who doesn't really know how to properly use discharge printing.
So next up here, we have a pretty fun one and it's called simulated process. There's also an alternative method to simulated process called for color process. This website's devoted to simulated process since that's what they do, but very quickly for color process uses CMYK printing. So cyan, yellow, magenta, and black to basically mix those colors to emulate a photorealistic print. Obviously it won't be as crisp as a real photo, but they can do a pretty darn good job. But CMYK printing or four color process printing and screen printing as opposed to simulated process is a little bit more difficult to get really vibrant, really accurate colors since you're dealing with just four colors and ultimately the resolution of a screen printing screen is nowhere near that of something like a printer. With a printer you can get away with a whole lot because the resolution is so good so you can use four colors and get incredible color detail, incredible color depth. But with the screen printing screen's mesh being much, much larger than that of a singular dot of ink from a printer, it can be really hard to get super good color vibrancy and accuracy. So simulated process as opposed to something like four color process will add in additional spot colors in order to make some of these tones and hues look much more natural and close to the actual image. But as a result, it will also tend to be a bit more expensive because you are using more and more colors. As with everything screen printing, the more colors you use, the more you'll spend to get that t-shirt printed. So always be mindful if you're trying to do complex stuff. And specifically with something like simulated process printing like this, this is an incredible technical thing for the printer to do. So you'll really wanna find a talented printer in order to do this, especially the color separation process where if you supply them with something like a flat image, for example, the printer has to go and break down each color into its own screen before they go ahead and print it. And that's a really difficult process to do. Color separation is basically an art form in itself in order to get complex color images like this Halloween one right here to print out good on a t-shirt. A lot of testing, a lot of thought, a lot of practice and experience go into making these things look this good because it is by no means easy to do. So should you wish to do a really complex print like this, make sure you have a printer in mind that can handle it and be able to do it. And also whenever you're setting up files for print, just in general, if you're able to keep the colors separate yourself, for example, putting all the yellows on one layer that are the same, all the oranges on one layer that are the same, that might save the printer a lot of time. Oftentimes with super complicated prints like this one, they'll run it through a piece of software that'll sort of break up the colors for them. And then they go in themselves afterwards, sort of by hand and manually adjust the darkness of all those films in order to get them to print the way they need to print. There's usually quite a bit of testing involved in order to pull off a really detailed print like the ones we have up here but definitely a very impressive way of printing should you go this route. Just be prepared to pay quite a bit extra over a simple like one to three color print in order to make results like this happen. And also quickly with screen printing, you can basically foil print as well. What they'll do is they'll lay down an adhesive and then put the foil over that adhesive once they lay it down and then just remove the excess. And essentially where there was adhesive printed on the shirt, the foil will stay. Where the adhesive was not, the foil will be gone. And then you end up with results kind of like this. So if you want a silver or a gold that actually reflects light, you can do that with screen printing. Just be aware that in general, foil printing on t-shirts doesn't last that long through washes. It's pretty finicky. When you think about it, it's a really thin metallic foil. So even though it's stuck on there, the more you wash it, the more you dry it, the quicker it's gonna basically flake off for lack of a better term. As a pseudo alternative, they also make metallic inks. They won't be as shiny or as true to real gold or silver as an actual foil will be, but they'll hold up much longer and much better. And generally they're cheaper to do as well. So if you ever wanna pull off gold colors, there's multiple ways of doing that. One way is actual foil and the other way being just metallic color colored inks. But that pretty much covers it for foil printing. Pretty specific, but if you want that look, this is how you can go ahead and do that. The next one here, I couldn't find great websites as far as images went for belt printing, but belt printing is all over printing that covers the entire shirt, like the icons on this guy's t-shirt right here. And essentially when you're belt printing, the t-shirt is run through a machine that's basically a giant belt, as the name of belt printing might sound. 
and the belt has ink rollers on it that then prints off onto the t-shirt. I'm not a super expert at the technical aspects of how belt printing is done, but if you want an all over t-shirt where your design covers all aspects of the t-shirt, belt printing is a way to do that. The only real consideration of belt printing is anything over one color gets exceptionally more expensive as you go up and the biggest belt print I've ever seen done was four colors. So it's not something to do if you want colors all over the entire t-shirt with like a rainbow effect or something like that. It just won't be a cost effective way of doing it. And also because you're running your t-shirts through a machine and it's not really a process that's easy to line up and register the print, the actual registration or the accuracy of how things line up can shift quite a bit with belt printing. So it makes the most sense to overprint things kind of like how this one color logo is over this t-shirt, where how closely they line up isn't critical. You wanna build in quite a bit of excess space between your elements, so if the print shifts because the shirt moves around in the machine a little bit, it doesn't look bad. And even in the case of this belt printed t-shirt, it's very possible they ran the t-shirt through once to get this, looks like a bunch of tools basically printed on the background and then screen printed this logo on top of it. That would make total sense to me, but also be expensive because you're not only paying for the belt print, but then a secondary screen print on top of that. But a pretty cool process that gets you results that cover the entire t-shirt. So this is one way of doing an all over print. And the other way of doing an all over t-shirt print is through dye sublimation. And a lot of print on demand printers will use this method. So Society6 is a good example of that method. So what dye sublimation is, is basically your design is printed out onto a giant piece of paper that's big enough to cover the entire t-shirt. And they use a special type of paper called sublimation paper. And once your design is printed out on that giant sheet of sublimation paper, they then turn it over so the ink touches the t-shirt. And then they essentially just use a giant heat press and heat press that ink onto the t-shirt, which causes it to stick. And when they remove the paper, your bright, colorful design is now put right onto the t-shirt. And just something to note, because of the way dye sublimation works, your t-shirt needs to have a really high polyester count. So if you want a 100% cotton t-shirt, at least to the best of my knowledge, sublimation is not an option that will work. And if you want to use like a 50-50 polyester cotton t-shirt, it will work because the ink is going to stick to that polyester, but it's going to have a much more faded appearance because it's only sticking to about 50% of the fibers of the t-shirt, where examples like this are almost certainly 100% polyester to get the bright colors and the complete coverage of the design. And it's also worth noting that at least in this example, it's almost for certain that the real t-shirt would not look this good because when you think about ironing on a giant piece of paper on top of a t-shirt getting the coverage to be totally flat and perfect like this shows it's almost impossible to do you almost always see like white streaks kind of under the arms and other places where the t-shirt might wrinkle up naturally as it's laying flat on the heat press an alternative way of doing that is by using cut and sew, where they would print the design via sublimation on a flat piece of fabric and then cut that piece of fabric up and sew it into the complete t-shirt, which would eliminate those gaps, but also be far more costly. And typically you have to run overseas to find a printer who is also capable of sewing that into a t-shirt once they print it out. But nevertheless, this is a really cool method of printing because it's totally full color. You can use as many colors as you want and it won't impact price, but it's also very, very expensive. Generally speaking, dye sublimation is the most expensive way of printing t-shirts because they do have to print it out on that giant piece of paper and then iron it onto a t-shirt. There's a lot of steps involved. It uses a lot of ink and all that will contribute to a much higher cost than a high quantity screen print using Plastisol ink, for example. It's not even comparable. For example, a full printed t-shirt using something like this, you might get the entire print done for like a dollar or two dollars, something like that, as opposed to dye sublimation, where I've seen individual t-shirts just to have them dye sublimated be 10 or $15. If you have huge quantities, that can certainly help, but be mindful of price. This is really best when you're dealing with a one-off. For example, this t-shirt is $34, and that is no doubt a reflection of the price of the dye sublimation process. And this method is one that has come up quite recently and has become very popular and also greatly increased in quality as time has went on. And that's direct to garment printing. And the easiest way to think of what is direct to garment printing, for lack of a better way of explaining it, think of it as a t-shirt printer 
where you place your t-shirt into a printer, usually you kind of wrap around a, a square block or something like that. So the part you want to print on is facing up and then you go ahead and just print it. It prints directly onto the t-shirt. You can use as many colors as you want because of the process. It allows you to do that. And the end result of that actually tends to be a pretty good print. I personally prefer screen printed just because I really like the process of screen printing. They hold up really well, but direct to garment printing has come a long way in a really short period of time to the point now where they hold up much better. When they were first put out, they tended to have problems with like washing out or having bad color coverage on t-shirts, especially if you want to print on something like black t-shirts, it was almost an impossibility. But now that's very doable. For example, these t-shirts right here, like this fox, if it loads up, is also a direct to garment. And what they tend to do is much like a plastisol, is they'll run a white coverage underneath everything through the printer before they print this fox. And then over that white coverage, they'll go ahead and print all the colors, which allows them to pop more, be more vibrant. But also because of the amount of time it takes to print a t-shirt using a direct to garment printer, like think of how long it takes to print a really large color photo, for example, even on a nice printer, it takes some time. And with printing on a t-shirt, that takes even more time than printing on something really easy to print on like paper. So because of that, this is much more expensive than comparable screen printing, generally speaking, unless you're doing low quantities like one or two, in which case direct to garment is typically cheaper because you're not paying all those screen setup costs as you would with a screen printer. But with a printing press like this one right here, you can print an entire t-shirt in a matter of seconds, really. It just takes, you know, like maybe a minute for six colors or less. I haven't personally printed a t-shirt on a press like this, but they move very quickly and that'll take much longer on a printer like this one where you're talking at least a few minutes to make sure that goes through. At least at the time of recording this, I'm pretty sure that's accurate, but really cool if you want to do low quantity stuff and just kind of test it out and see how stuff looks on t-shirts. And this technology at all has led to the rise of print on demand sites like Society6, like Cafe Press, like Redbubble, all those sites where you buy a one of a singular design, the ability to use a direct to garment printer that eliminates all those setup costs totally make that possible. And that's really good for designers. So last up here, I'm missing to cover very quickly vinyl transfers or plastisol transfers. And this is a really high quality Jersey. So I think in this case, this is actually a cut and sew applique, which is a piece of fabric sewn onto the other fabric. But if you've ever had a cheaper Jersey, like school jerseys, for example, like a football Jersey or a soccer Jersey, where the name and the number felt really thick and really plasticky, that was probably a vinyl transfer, which is basically they have the letters cut out in vinyl or the numbers cut out in vinyl, and then they heat press them onto the t-shirt. This is also popular people who have cutting machines. I think a popular brand is called Cricut, where they can cut out the shapes on a piece of vinyl and then basically heat press them onto a t-shirt. It's very economical. It's pretty cheap to do things this way because setup is still really easy. You just heat press it on the shirt and you're good to go. But the downside is, is it's really thick. It feels plasticky. It's not something that you'd want to wear if it covered, for example, the entire front of the t-shirt. But it's definitely a method that a lot of at home people use. You can buy a heat press for like $200 on the very, very cheap end. So if you want to start heat pressing shirts, this is certainly one way to go. I'll say be very careful of those paper packs essentially that you can print through on your own printer and then apply those to t-shirts. They tend to be pretty crap at best to say it bluntly because they tend to fade out really fast. They just don't hold up well. It's not really what you'd want to do for something professional. And that's where something like a plastisol transfer would come in, which is kind of an in-between between printing right on the garment and the inks used there, where a plastisol transfer is the same ink that is used on a plastisol screen printed t-shirt but it's just on a piece of transfer paper so they can go ahead and heat press that on the shirt and then pull it off. And that's much, much higher quality than something you can expect to print out of your own printer. The downside there is that it tends to be a little bit thicker because it's not printed directly onto the t-shirt. It can't really blend in and soak in the way a traditional t-shirt print would, but it doesn't require you to have your own screen printing set up. You can just have those produced somewhere, usually fairly cheaply, and then heat press them on yourself. Although there will certainly be a learning curve to that, figuring out like how long to heat press it and what temperatures work the best, all that fun stuff. But this is another method of printing. But that pretty much covers all the printing methods that I can think of that I consider to be professional quality or close to professional quality ways of printing designs onto various t-shirts. So this ended up being quite a long video, but I do hope you found it helpful. 
there was a lot to cover and I hope I covered everything. But if you have any additional questions, feel free to ask those in the comment section. I'll be happy to help where I can. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new content for designers. Thanks so much for watching.